Welcome everyone to episode 42 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and this week we're going to dive into an indie game called Heart of Enya. I found this game through the Silicon Valley Indie Game Developers Discord um, and wanted to bring you the students behind the game. So this game was produced as a capstone project by a handful of students um, from UCSC. Uh, with us today, we have Charles, Fai, and David. Thanks for coming on, everyone. How are you doing today? Doing great. Doing, doing great. great. Thanks so much for doing having good. us. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys coming on. It's a uh, pretty short notice um, from when I first spoke with uh, Charles, um, but I'm glad we can jump into the game and talk about it. But before we get into that, I just want to remind everybody that's listening, um, thanks for listening. If you enjoy what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to subscribe and share. It means the world to us, and it helps us grow the community so more people can find out about these games that we're showing off. So first off, I just want to jump into introductions with everyone. So let the viewers know who you are, what you do, um, and just a little bit about yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, hello, I'm Charles Miller. I'm the producer of Heart of Enya. Um, we're all students at UC Santa Cruz, but we uh, graduated June of last year. Um, yeah, uh, we are recent uh, college graduates and are, are looking around for employment in the games industry, but... Um, we made this wonderful game as our capstone project, and we'd like to show it off. Um, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Fi. I did art for the game. I edited uh, the dialogue, and I've been following uh, the you know post production stuff. I have been um, working as a QA tester. I also graduated University of California Santa Cruz UCSC um, in 2020. And yeah, I've also kind of just been, you know, scoping out for new jobs in the games industry. And since uh, working on Heart of Enya meant so much to me, I, you know, a bunch of us decided to keep working after we graduated. I'm David Magnuson. I was a game designer on Heart of Enya. I primarily worked on the move sets, the underlying systems, progression, and the main encounters of the game. Uh, like everyone else here, I graduated June last year, and I'm currently also doing that grind, trying to find jobs in the game industry. Uh, I have done some post-production work on polishing the encounters, but it's been fairly minor. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, we all know that, uh, that post-college grind where we're out looking for a job after we get the degree, um, and there's always a little gap there before we find something, but I'm glad you guys really enjoyed working on the game as your capstone and you wanted to continue working on it. Um, I guess the first question I had for you, all of you, and since you all have a different perspective in different areas that you worked on the game, how did the idea of the game come to be? Where was your inspiration for the game? Yeah, um, definitely a lot of games that we uh, took from as inspiration. The main sort of uh, heart and soul behind the the team and the pitch, actually, um, because since it was a school project, it was pitched to the rest of the class to uh, get people interested. And there's sort of like a hiring process within the class. And our uh, creative de director for this project was uh, uh, Tino, um, who is our technical director um, and was uh, helped a lot by Gigi, our art director. Um, but basically the, the core concept for it was what if um, in the sort of classical group of adventures, uh, journeying into the unknown, uh, you played as the campfire that brought those heroes together and kind of uh, warmed and comfort comforted them in a hostile environment. Um, so taking a lot of inspiration from like uh, Banner Saga and the, the tactical combat there or um, um, uh, Fire Emblem and the sort of uh, strategy RPG elements there. Um, and actually a lot of artistic and emotional inspiration from Dark Souls, of course, with the whole idea of, of sitting around a bonfire and having a moment of respite uh, between battles. Yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm curious, um, from Five, where did you draw your inspiration for the art itself? Because it, it has a really unique, almost, I don't know if I would even describe it this way, but it kind of has like a comic booky feel like the the lines are really distinctive oh yeah um and it I, I think it looks fantastic but i want to know what you drew from um so i was only one of the artists the head character artist is janelle and i think they did a fantastic job with the characters 
Um, their style, I think, is very heavily, like you said, like influenced by like having these sharp, bold lines and stuff. And we all kind of, everybody on the art team kind of work together to make sure that our styles all mesh together. So uh, Gigi, who uh, Charles mentioned earlier, did the backgrounds. And uh, Janelle did the characters. And I did the creatures and enemies and props. And so I think a lot of it was kind of trying to sync our styles together and going for like a kind of cartoonish um, sort of style there. Uh, yeah, I think other artistic inspirations were, I know specifically for the characters, we were looking at um, uh, like the idea of like reimagining like uh, D and D like NPC classes, like guard and like farmer as playable characters. And, um, yeah, I'd say for my work personally, for, like, the creatures, I was looking a lot at, like, ice itself and ice formations and um, trying to be able to, like, make something that looks, that, like, blends the idea between, uh, like, not alive but still distinctly something that you can interact with. Yeah, yeah. We were kind of going for something as the enemies as a natural force rather than, like, intelligent creatures that was that were coming at you um sort of playing to that like oh you're not like slaughtering uh, a group of like actually intelligent creatures it's it's more of fighting against nature and the the blizzard itself and the the frost enemies are are an extension of that um, yeah i i like the idea of of nature kind of fighting back mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i think uh, a lot of our our art inspiration um was sort of just a a uh uh cause of the uh, art styles of the artists that we had on the team and also a uh, uh, due to our limitations um, in art and scope for the project. Um, so we kind of went for this um, painterly art art artistic vibe um, and had a lot of just like uh, uh, standing still keyframes and whatnot and used um, other methods uh, and, and smart design choices to uh, push those to the limit and sort of sell movement and action, um, but still keeping to those uh, painterly forms. Perfect. Um, I guess from all of you, I'm curious uh, for the listeners that are listening on the podcast, um, can you describe the game to us? Like what kind of game is it? Uh, what can players expect if they were to buy this game or give it a try? Um, so... Uh, basically, it's a SRPG, and it takes place in segments of your characters are fighting a massive amount of enemies, and the idea is, like, you're slowly sort of starting to, like, uh, wane them down, and you keep retreating back to the campfire after you make some progress, so it's this kind of cycle of fighting and then retreating back and talking at the campfire, and these campfire moments are, like, supposed to sort of like help the characters overwork their personal issues which in turn makes them stronger for when they go back out to fight the um, enemies that wait for them as they try and escape this area basically and that's the big cycle of the game and the fights are you know srpg style you know grid characters you position them and then choose which move they do and then it takes turns between character turns and enemy turns Kind of, you know, other SRPG games, I'd say people who aren't familiar would be like Fire Emblem, Banner Saga, um, stuff like that. Is there anything I'm missing? Actually, a, a bit of inspiration from Mega Man Battle Network. Um, Final Fantasy Tactics, too. We leaned heavily on that, if I remember correctly. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, but we did uh, another part of our design philosophy is sort of like... Um, uh, they are are have gone up to the north here due to um, issues in their past, or and have sort of been bound together by circumstance. But um, around the campfire, they're able to confide in each other and and become sort of a found family um, against the the cold. Yeah, while it's while the gameplay is a lot of SRPG encounters, I would say the game is mainly character narrative driven. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I definitely got that when I gave it a try, and it was it was cool to see the story develop. And there is like, even I think I played for like forty five minutes before I had to take off, and 
it was cool. Like there was a lot of character development in that 45 minutes. Like you really did start to get to know the characters in their past. Um, I guess the next thing that I'm curious about is how did the final vision of the game evolve over time? Cause I know with Galactic Battleground, we developed the game and it was kind of like a, let's make a new Galaga. And then it turned into two player and then four player and then multiplayer. And like, it just, it all changed from, beta all the way to the finished product how did you guys see the game change over time um so when tina was making uh her proposal for the game we had actually had some experience together um as as students making similar type of games and similar type of uh time frames so we had an idea of the scope that we um could uh develop into so the whole sort of act structure that we have and the uh the how many bosses we had and how many encounters we had had been roughly outlined um, at the the start of development. And that was actually a a big strong suit for uh, why production went so smoothly is that we were able just to just follow through on that rough outline and uh, iterate it on as we went along. I think uh, out of the design that changed the most um, through production, it may be the um, uh, characters and their move sets and whatnot. I know we iterated a lot, on Bappy's, um, since for that character, um, we had to f- uh, strike a fine line between, uh, they're the, the small farmer character, so we wanted to make them feel like they were weak in the beginning, of course, but they that the, in finding strength, they were still extremely useful and, and could find a place in the world, um, but not by just making their numbers go up and, and making them uh, hit things really hard but by um, utilizing their uh, gardening hoe in, in interesting ways to move things around in the environment. So we, we definitely spent a long amount of time uh, iterating on that particular part of it. Um, I can elaborate a bit on yeah. the uh, design iteration if you want. Go for it. Uh, so to start with, Kino actually had a prototype going into the project formation and that had very rough outlines of what you want to get out of the characters. Uh, And I think we use as a basis to form the character movesets. As Charles said, Bappy went through, I think, three or five, three to five iterations while we were trying to like really figure out how we can make a character feel weak and still contribute. Uh, I think early on we had like a sort of kind of rogue view of Bappy, and like like the archetypical uh, D and D class of it, like the sneaky maneuver. Yeah, like they would move through the enemy backline and disrupt. And while we did elements of that did make it through to the final, we did shift into more of a utility role, uh, where Bappy has the ability to shift enemy positions as well as create obstacles. Yeah, with uh, using their hoe as sort of like um, one of those canes from uh, a show business that like grab somebody and pull them into position or push a, uh, an object out of position. I think the grid system was in from the start, though. Though I do think we did end up adjusting the dimensions of the encounter area as mm-hmm. we tested and found different layouts to work better. Yeah, I, don't, I also don't think we had any design for the bosses finalized uh, in the beginning, but we kind of knew their their general shape. I'm not even sure we had like fully developed concept for the bosses at the beginning, aside from the main antagonist. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but we we were <laughs> we actually decided because um, we knew that we wanted to uh, one of the big halfway point story beats being retrieving a person that had been lost to the frost uh, and frozen solid. But I think in, in later development, we were like, oh, what if that ice that had Ed Froden this, in this person solid was a boss in and of itself? Um, and that's how we got kind of our mid-boss, the uh, the Lewis Acol, where you're uh, uh, freeing one of the uh, um, later stage party members um, who who's, who's act- was actually captured. And that was the, the uh, plot reason for uh, one of the uh, Salil for, for venturing up was to, to save her. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like 
how you guys just described the development of the game and the small things that changed. And I mean, yeah, definitely having a solid uh, guide on your way into this into the story and producing the game had to have made it a lot smoother because we were kind of just winging it. And I know a lot of developers kind of just wing it. They, they have an idea and they just kind of start putting it together. Um, and that's that's huge. Um, I guess Absolutely. One, one thing I'm curious about, because you've, you've mentioned so many other people um, being part of this project, how large is the team behind this game? And how did you guys divide the work? Like how many people were in each segment of the project? We got 13 people exactly. Um, and it is... Uh, we will admit it is quite large for both a student project and an indie project. Um, but looking at uh, what we wanted to, to accomplish, it was a, a really good si- uh, size and we divided it quite neatly. Um, so we had three artists, two designers, um, three program, four programmers. Uh, yeah, Hannah. Yeah, uh, quite, quite a large team. Um, so we had uh, kind of uh, siloed uh, departments for each of the different like technical artistic uh, sides of development, one whole dedicated uh, composer. And I was actually able to be a dedicated producer for the team, which uh, helped a lot because in, in previous project experience, being a producer, you definitely have to share that hat with at least like two or three other roles. So because we were able to, to silo and, and focus so well, I feel like that, um, helped with uh, uh, not making it as, as stressful uh, because you're able to focus on the, the, the few tasks in front of you. Um, how do you guys feel about it? Um, yeah, basically I agree with uh, everything you said. I think that we were both able to divide work really well, so everybody got to work on what they wanted to, but also if somebody wanted to wear multiple hats like I did, we got the chance to kind of do lots of different things, and I think that was really um neat for me yeah we had a pretty i think we had probably one of the largest teams um at our Our uh, class yeah of our class yeah but like that worked pretty well for us and yeah um it did make it a bit uh more difficult to to stay together and um uh, monetize things later after development and after we'd graduated but um, for the, the time that we were, we were in class, um, it was really focused and, and really helpful to have that many people. Yeah, I mean, I would assume having a team that large would make things move quite a bit faster than the, some indies that you find that are one person or three people. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah so when is this game going to be available and where are people going to be able to play it? Yes, you'll be able to. Uh, so this is getting uh, released on Friday, right? Then it'd be today. <laughs> Yeah, the game will the game will be out when this goes live. Uh, March twenty sixth. You can uh, we are releasing it on Steam. We had a build on itch, and that's where we released it originally for our uh, class project. But we releasing it on Steam, so go and go and check it out. And it's going to be completely free, so anybody should be able to get it. It's going to be on able to be played both on PC and Mac. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear it'll be accessible to pretty much anybody that wants to give it a try. Um, and since I have all of you on here, we've talked about the game a little bit, kind of gave people an idea of what the game is like, where they can play it. I want to know about your guys' history with video games and kind of tell me some of your, your earliest memories, uh, games that really stick out to you from your past um, and what you've been playing lately. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um Honestly, the the big game that sticks out for me from my past and one of the games that got me interested in in doing uh, development uh, was Bastion from Supergiant Games, um, which probably isn't that old compared to a a lot of other people's like first big games. But uh, uh, it really hit a chord with me, especially because it was a a much smaller company than the the other one, other usual companies I've been seeing making games. And it sort of um, gave me hope for pursuing game development myself. And now they're, they got IGN, Game of the Year, Hades. And I'm, I'm rooting for them, honestly. Um, but that's sort of uh, my uh, origin story, as it were. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have a specific game that made me think, oh, wow, this is what I want to do. But just generally, games have like been a pretty big part of my life. Um, I, you know, when I was, like, really little, I, like, actually learned how to read by, like, 
playing a lot of like educational computer games that my parents got me and then I when I was like you know in more of like my uh, like eight nine ten I was really into a lot of Nintendo games and then as I got older I've kind of moved more into my favorite I still like Nintendo a lot but my like favorite kind of game tends to be more indie projects and those are probably um, some of my favorite games I think Lately, I haven't been um, playing a lot of new games. I started Hades recently, and I've been enjoying that. Uh, shout out to, again, Supergiant Games. Um, and I've been playing a lot of Genshin Impact. Hell um, yeah. <laughs> just, you know, it's something to do during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about you, David? Yeah. Uh, I would say a lot of my inspiration for wanting to make games comes from card games and also yeah. transistor uh also a super giant <laughs> they uh they, they really do make games that feel really complete and compelling what can i say mm-hmm. i think my early games were mainly let me think world of warcraft i got into world of warcraft at a very young age <laughs> and also i tried to drag you into wild classic when that came out as well <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I did try Wild Classic at launch. He tried dragging me into it like three months later, I think <laughs> it was. Uh, Toontown Online is a game I will stand always. Mm-hmm. I, I feel Toontown Online is like a really perfect, if rough, if that, for its time it was perfect, kids MMO. Yeah, it seems really hard to pull off a kids MMO, but... Uh... I mean, Jesse Shell does like some really interesting stuff, so... I feel I'm not that. surprised he was able to do it. Nowadays, uh, I think the genres that influence me the most are roguelikes and card games, and also a bit of MMOs. Yeah, Slay the Spire I, for sure. Yeah, I'm a big fan of system-heavy games, especially ones that have iterative elements. Yeah, and I feel like we brought that a lot into Heart of Any as well, where we have sort of this uh, tight movement system that uh, has overlapping with like friendly fire, or uh, enemy AOE attacks, where you got to think about placement, and I like that sort of systems design as well. Yeah, designing it was a bit rough actually, because like we have what four days of main encounters, mm-hmm. and I have a six by five grid. Yeah. Like, so how do you make each? Field? I, I was really starting to stretch for variety towards the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think everyone had a, a World of Warcraft stint. I actually just got out of another one. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um we we've all been there and I mean to speak on those those old MMOs from when we were younger, I I'm definitely thinking of like Club Penguin was one that I know was was played quite a bit. Um yeah. Yeah, that's that's just that's funny. That brings back a lot of nostalgia for me. Yeah, it's wild. My mom was actually higher level than me in World of Warcraft. <laughs> Yeah, Dude, my parents were like progression raiders. Yeah. yeah, I don't think my parents have ever played a video game that I did not make. Aw, yeah, it's good to try yours out though. Yeah. <laughs> ah. So I guess now that you guys are kind of wrapping up development, at least the the bulk of development for Heart of Enya, is there are there any other projects that you are working on right now? Um, actually, uh, me and David and some other friends from UC Santa Cruz have decided that we all wanted to get together and work on a game, which was actually David's idea. So do you want to speak about that a little bit? Yeah, so I talked to someone who, uh, through Peer Connections at UCSC, about like the industry because they have a job in the industry and I was, had some questions I wanted to ask. And they recommended, you know, if you can, during times like these, uh, it's good to kind of start a project with other people and have like a multi-month time frame. Mm-hmm. Because Something... like I suck at working independently. Sorry. I, uh... Oh, yeah. Like a, like a small scoped project. Yeah, because... I've really been struggling with getting myself to work independently on goals in in these times. These times, times that we have. Uh, on that note, like 
it's a really good thing. We had Charles as a producer. We had organized departments going into this year because we had to very rapidly shift to pure remote. And oh, yeah, that was a huge uh, hardship we had to overcome. Yeah. Because um, yeah. even before the pandemic started, um, there our school wasn't properly paying our uh, teacher's assistants, so they went on strike. So in solidarity of the strikers, we decided to not cross their picket line and stopped going to classes and meetings on campus. And we had to shift to working remote. And then following that, we had the pandemic. So we had to really figure out how to like rework our entire um, working schedule because everything was suddenly, you know, rapidly changing and like the, you know, places we had set up by our department to have meetings that were all on campus and you know, then we had to all move back home and like we live all across California. So I think that was definitely probably one of the like biggest struggles we had to overcome. But I think that like, you know, considering like the whole everything that happened, we all kind of worked together really well and we were still able to turn out something that I think is really amazing. Mm -hmm. I agree. But yeah, because of that, uh, I decided to try and start a project and I got like, a lot more interest from the uh, UCSC game design discords I'm in than I expected. So I think we now have a, a team of nine to ten people. We've recently decided on a direction, and like I think we're gonna properly settle into working on it soon. Hopefully. Yeah, I'm. I'm a personally more focused on like getting some employment in the games industry first. Um, but I'll probably go on a bender and make a horror game one of these weekends. Oh, oh that's fun. interesting. I had no clue you were into horror. Yeah, I just I'll stretch my limbs a little bit in that direction. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that everybody's got something coming. Do you have any idea about that horror game? Oh, uh, um, <laughs> I made a uh, a weird game about high fiving things in um, uh, one of my classes in school. Um, so I actually wanted to do a uh, a game about reaching out and touching things. And I felt like that was a uh, sort of a first person experience about having kind of a, a hand in front of you that you use to interact with the world. And I, I don't know, I feel like that has a lot of uh, utility for being utilized as a, a horror game that I'm going to ex be exploring. Yeah, I mean, that definitely sounds interesting with I mean, you could throw a lot of jump scares in there. And it could be yeah, yeah. Quite, quite scary. Uh, I guess to wrap everything up, can you guys give shout outs to anyone you want to give a shout out to as well as social media links so that people can find the game? Oh, yeah. Uh, I want to give a shout out to one of our other uh, classmates game, Magic Trick, which is about uh, a, a skateboarding game, which was rad as hell that also came out from the uh, UCSC, our, our same class. So go check them out as well. I believe they're on uh, uh, itch. Um, but yeah, uh, I... Also to all of our the, the rest of our teammates who uh, can't make it to this, you can check out our credits both within the game and on itch um, and check out their work if you're interested in, in the, the design or art or writing of the, the game. But yeah, those, those are the shout outs I want to give out. Um, our Twitter is twitter.com slash heart of Enya. Um, and our itch is heart of Enya dot itch dot io slash heart dash of dash Enya. Um, and there you can, like Charles said, find all our credits, find all our information. And, um, if you just Google Heart of Enya Steam, you should be able to pull up our Steam page. And yeah, thanks so much for having us. Uh, I'd like to quickly shout out all the faculty in game design at UCSC. Oh, absolutely. Because mm -hmm. it can't have been easy to transition into full remote. Why, like, Matt, because it's very much an in-person thing. Like, we have these days we come in and we all share games and tests and in-person lectures and having to shift such a large project to remote can't have been easy absolutely yeah well i'm glad that all the shows came out um check out everything that they said i'll throw links down in the description um so you guys can find them easily through the video um, i want to thank david charles and five for coming on again and speaking about heart of enya this is a fantastic game that you need to go try, especially since it's free. Um, there's no reason not to try it. Um, and if you guys like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to subscribe, share, like, all that stuff. 
And until next time, peace. Thank you.